Okay, welcome everyone. We're back in our series of um, talking about our Global Poland Syndrome Community Register, soon to be launched. And I have got the wonderful Stuart Cameron here with me today from the lovely Australia. So thanks Stuart for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Thanks Sam, thanks for having me. Awesome, okay. So you'll, people know now the questions are, are the same across the board here, but Stuart, it would be really lovely if you could just tell us about your Poland syndrome journey so far. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> right, it's a long one. <laughs> it's nearly 50 years of it. Uh, it didn't really affect me too much as a youth, apart from being... Uh, I think mentally, probably it would really hurt. Really, I struggled mentally with it, with the physical appearance as a as a young kid, and feeling inadequate. I've got so I've got right hand, the peg muscle gone, um, and so I was always stood out a little bit different. And I got I got teased at school. I got bashed up at school. Fortunately, I was able to pretty well so I didn't get teased too much after that um but then as I grew older I um was always physically quite fit and uh I was a state champion cyclist so New South Wales in Australia is a state um yeah so I was a state champion cyclist silver medal at the nationals wow. I nearly got to the nearly 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 I got a letter I almost got to the Australian Institute of Sport so uh, physically, I was actually pretty good. And that's like late teens sort of time frame. Um, and I got to a point in time where I went, no, no more cycling. I'm the same age as Lance Armstrong. Mm. So you get the idea of what was going on at the time, with drugs and stuff. And I thought, I'm not, that's not part of me because I'm not someone that wants to cheat. You know? Mm. Um, and then, yeah, took on a role as a, so at, at the time I was a bicycle mechanic, so worked with my hands and now I'm a podiatrist, been a podiatrist for 25 years. Um, however, now we've got to the point now in my life where this old chestnut ain't working too well anymore because this one doesn't do anything. This one's done everything for so long. Yeah. Um it's falling apart. Um, so it's a bit of a struggle. So I've got to work out what to do with my life. So my pollen syndrome journey, I guess, is uh, um, a bit, a bit, a bit strange because, like, how can you achieve so much in an athletic career yet you're still now you're stuffed? Yeah, you, know I mean? you really pushed um, your body, didn't you, at a young age? Like, because that's not sorry? like you pushed your body quite a bit at a young age. Because that's not like Paralympic sport you're doing. That's just like uh, I got, I got, I got offered to go to the Paralympics and I turned it down because I felt guilty because I was a, I was beating the able-bodied cyclists and I thought that's not fair. But I got, I could have gone to Atlanta. Um, and I, and I actually, I, re I, I, I regret not taking that up because it would have been a good experience but um i just felt guilty about it and that's mm -hmm. sort of a strange juxtaposition of of yes i'm disabled but i'm being able-bodied people and then i thought that's not fair on people like who've got one leg but i didn't understand the whole yeah. there's all these um different categories of disabilities i didn't i didn't actually understand all that i've never, I've never looked into it there's all these different categories and I yeah. yeah and it's really common like 2021 side you know yeah absolutely like I talk to a lot of people across the community who don't think feel that they would ever qualify for the Paralympics and you know it's just not the case and it's just getting that knowledge out there and having those role models that you know we do have a couple of them now in the Paralympics you know Kim Day Bell strings to mind but if you don't know that then you know it can be difficult to take that leap yeah I, like I, that. I think if we've got some ambassadors to yeah. put pollen syndrome on the on the forefront there's that so paralympics is a great platform to to get pollen syndrome out there and and show people you know that 
yeah, we may have disabilities and yes, we do have our struggles, but hey, we can still do things. Yeah. But yeah, there's still we've still got our struggles. This is it. And absolutely. That's, and it's uh it's not it's not particularly easy um for a lot of us and uh, and it's and it's co- it's a complex syndrome that we don't really know enough about i think we need more research into it and uh i'd love people to get on board and support some sort of research for it to 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 work out what's going on because mm. in my experience of over the last 12 months as you know sam i've been looking into and reading what's going on with and then there's some crossover syndromes and things like that 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 we might be getting complicated with um but we 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 so need research into this um but like i said to you earlier before we were on air um i've never met a doctor in australia that knows what pollen syndrome is and I'm, i'm just about to turn 50 and I've been to a lot of doctors over my time, and they go, "Pollen syndrome? What's that?" Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no idea. Mm-hmm. And so you try to explain it to them, and you got to go over and over and over and over. So, so can we get some? Um, just it ne- needs to be more recognised, and the, yeah. the yeah. medical profession needs to know more about what this syndrome is and the. The, the variances of it because because there are lots of variances and I know there's crossover syndromes that might be misconstrued as pollen syndrome sorry my back's killing me um but we need we need we need that um education in the medical profession and uh, uh it's it, the only way we can do that is we can, we need positive research to to get down to the new degree and then we can present that and go forward with your medical profession yeah absolutely and obviously for us like the first step for that is to launch this register so we can start tracking some data absolutely Poland syndrome Ab- and Ab- absolutely i think the register is a great great initiative i'm totally on board with it and i thank you sam so much for your work and your effort that you've done and i think uh the more we can get on this register the better because it will just help paint that picture like we were just talking off air before about you know you got all oh, the data and blah 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 and you've got who was who was it you got on board you got someone on on board to try and help you out mm-hmm. and it's yeah it's mind blowing how much data you got to go through and um, yeah research is it's a, it's a you know it's it's hard work yeah and uh, but I think the more people that can register mm-hmm. then you go in in terms of uh, your um statistics yeah. the, the more numbers you've got the better the stats are the lower the confidence in interval that's a stats thing anyway yeah. i wasn't very good at stats at uni no but, uh, but yeah it's yeah. it's about the confidence interval so so the, yeah. the, the, the more numbers you got the bigger the numbers yeah. the smaller the confidence interval so you got the, a better chance of saying this is for sure rather than we're not so sure so not so sure yeah we're pretty sure oh we're very sure does that make sense makes sense yeah absolutely so with the more more people more people can get registered absolutely better yeah so i encourage everyone out there to yeah get on the register yeah fantastic fantastic and who knows one day down the line when we've got all this data in the register i know you're really keen on like doing some research yourself aren't you so if that can absolutely help guide some of the research you do next then that oh, would be amazing wouldn't it absolutely would be fantastic I and mean, then that would be basically i go to to try and start something mm. would be this whole register would be awesome data for us to try and do something i obviously have to get a stats person in to help me out <laughs> <laughs> well don't ask me that's definitely not me but but, you know. but i do have the, i do have the medical background to sort of know where to, to tell the stats person where to go yeah oh no that's fantastic it's absolutely fantastic and it's just joyous to me that there's so many people around the world like yourself that like share the passion for the research and the data and what we need to do to finally give everyone in the community what they deserve which is the right treatment at the right time throughout their lives 
Yeah, well, I think for me, it's 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 not uh, it's not really about me now anymore. Maybe it was 20, 30 years ago, but now for me, it's well, what, what's my legacy, and what can I do for future generations? And I know you've got a young one, mm-hmm. and um, he's thirteen, right? Yeah. And that just it. it you know, if they can get support at an early age and some sort of intervention and like some physical therapy to just help them through, um, I, it's got to be a positive thing. But we need the research and the data to actually prove that, that it's a because so many people just go, Oh my, what do you mean, pollen syndrome? It's not a real thing, is it really? Oh, I've got a small hand, but it's like a throwaway thing, it's more than that. And um, we need the research to back it and um, we can help future generations. It's not going to go away and we don't know whether it's congenital or not. Is it, you know, are there other issues going on there? Like, can it be passed on? We don't really 100% know that. We need we need money and funding for research there. Absolutely. Oh, it's wonderful. I could talk so much more to you, Stuart, and I'm sure we will in the future about this. And yeah. I'm so, so grateful that you're lending your support to this and for your time today. So thank you very much for joining us. That's all right, Sam. I can talk underwater. No. <laughs> have, a, have a lovely morning. I'll have a lovely evening. Yeah, thank you.